hi guys welcome back to our channel on today's video i'll be showing you guys how i made this beautiful cow neck dress with laced back i posted a shirt on this dress last month and i got a comment to make a tutorial on how i made the dress so guys here you go the measurements we'll be using on this tutorial is length 38, bust 38, waist 30, hip 44, half length 17. So we have our starting line marked out already, which is the chest line. I'm starting from the chest line. I already minus 7 inches for my straps. That's why I'm starting from chest line. We're not doing neckline, shoulder, and all of that here. It starts from seven, seven inches upwards. Then we'll now take our half length, which is 17 inches half length, plus one inch for sewing allowance because we have to join it to the skirt part. That's what I'm doing here. So on this chest line, we're going to come up by two, come down by two inches to get our bust line that's where we'll be taking our bust measurements i went down from the chest line by two you know bust is taking nine inches from your shoulder measurements so i'm ruling out my nine inches where i'll be taking my bust measurement so on that bust line we'll be taking our bust measurements which is 38 divided by four and that will give us 9.5 so after like, taking 9.5 you add your one inch for sewing allowance so i'm taking 10.5 after doing that we'll go to the waistline that's um half length where you took your 17 inches remember then you mark your you take your waist measurement we are using waist 30 here 30 divided by 4 we have 7.5 and i'll be taking 8.5 because i've added my one inch for seam allowance then after taking the waist measurements we'll come to this chest line and go up by two inches that two inches is to add extra length to give us that cow effect the fabric that will drop on your chest so after doing that, the next thing we'll do is take our shoulder measurement on that chest line because it's the end of that shoulder measurement that you slant that two inches you took from. Just like you see me doing. I took my shoulder measurement and I'm slanting it to the front part of the dress. I'm making sure my two inches is firm. So basically this up for the upper part. The next thing we'll do now is take our armhole measurement the armhole line remember armhole is usually from eight inches to seven inches and um, nine inches i've already minus seven from the top so that's why you see me placing my curve or french rule or what you call it on that um where my shoulder measurement dropped to mark out my armhole line and at the end of that armhole line you will now trace the end of your waist line measurement to your armhole line and we're done for the front so let's take it again we took our chest line and then our bust line and then the waist line and we went up with two inches on top of our chest line to get that extra slant and that slant started from where our shoulder measurement stopped and then after that we took our armhole then from your waist line you trace back up to the armhole and then cut. It's that simple. After cutting it out, we label the lines and then we'll now go ahead and cut the back parts. This dress doesn't really have a back. That little two inches by the armhole under the armpit as you can see on the screen is what we'll be cutting out now so i placed the paper the front pattern on top of another paper and took two inches from the armhole and maintained that two inches and cut it down you don't cut it straight because the main front itself is slanted is not straight so we're going to slant according to the front parts the straight parts where i am marking 
this where this um, ruler is is where the loops will be while the slant part will be attached to the front so we're going to secure it with a pin so that we don't go and mistakenly turn it the other way around so we cut So now that we are done cutting the upper part, the next thing we have to do is cut the skirt part. We are using length 38, remember? And we have to minus 17 from the 38. 17 is that upper part we cut before. So now you take whatever is remaining, which is supposed to be around 21, yes? And I'm taking 23 because I need 2 inches to fold in the under of my skirt. And then we'll now take see as you see me taking this tape downwards to see if my 38 is actually correct from the upper parts that i've cut before don't after that we will now take our waist measurements waist 30 that we're using divided by 4 will give us 7.5 but here i'll take 8.5 for sewing allowance then 9.5 for that allowance and after taking the waistline measurement, we'll go down by 9 inches to get our hip measurement. And on that line, you draw a straight line because it's on that line that you measure your hip measurement divided by 4. And on this video, we're using hip 44 divided by 4. That will give us 11. And then I'll add my 1 inch allowance for sewing. After that, we'll go to the down part of the skirt, we'll take our hip measurement there without any sewing allowance because that side is supposed to be um, tight. From that line, you now trace straight down with your straight rule to the hip measurement and from the hip measurement, you trace down to your waist measurement. And I don't have enough paper, so I'm going to be using this paper for my back cutting to back pattern i'll just add extra inches to the edges but before we do that let's take our darts as you remember to take a skirt that you take four inches from the center of the skirt and then make it mark a point on that four inches go to your left by 0 0.5 go to your right by 0 0.5 and then come down straight by four inches for the front this is me going to my left and right by 0 0.5 to make it one inch dart allowance then come down straight on the front skirt by four inches and if it's the back you're cutting come down by five inches so after taking the darts what i will do now is to measure my back take my back measurements this is the front i do not have enough paper for this tutorial and i decided to cut the back on top of the front so what i will do is add my extra two inches to the waistline that's for zipper allowance and one more inch for sewing allowance and then on the hip line add my extra one and a half inch depends on how many allowance you like sewing allowance you like to take on your clothes sometimes i use one inch sometimes i use two inches sometimes i use 0 0.5 depends if the cloth is stretchy you don't need a lot of um, sewing allowance so i'm just adding my extra allowance for the back for the back of the skirt because i'm cutting it together here when i place this pattern paper on the fabric all i need to do is just fold in that extra on the sides while cutting the front and when i'm cutting the back i open up the parts i folded to bring out that extra allowance for the back that's how to manage your paper when you don't have <laughs> so guys thank you so much for watching to this point we're done with the cutting of the upper part of this cow neck dress and the skirt part so this is the upper part and this is the skirt part that we just cut out now and also note that this upper part can be added to the trouser pattern we cut months ago if you remember to make a jumpsuit yeah you heard me right a jumpsuit this upper part can be added to the trouser pattern we cut few months ago remember you just attach this upper part we just cut now this cow neck upper we just cut to the trouser pattern we made last month and then you have yourself a jump a cow neck jumpsuit 
So right now we're keeping this aside. I just wanted to let you know you can add this tutorial to the previous tutorial to make yourself a cow neck jumpsuit. So now let's go work with this pattern. In this video, we'll be using these co two colors because for the sake of this tutorial, I don't actually have fabrics at home. This dress is um, was joined in the waist part, if you can, as you can see. We'll be using this brown part for the under, like the skirt part, and we'll be using this cream color part to cut the upper part that has that cow neck. So let's cut out the skirt first. So cutting the skirt parts, this is me. I folded, we have to cut the um, front part first. Remember I said I have to fold in this extra allowance I added for the back pattern. So I'll cut, fold in that extra allowance and cut out the front part first. And when it's time to cut the back, I'll open up that allowance. Yeah, you're seeing this fold under because I decided to reduce the length of this um, dress. I have the long one before. This one was just made for the purpose of the tutorial and that's the main reason you see me managing fabric. So as you can see, this other side of the, the back side of the skirt, I'm cutting it twice because this fabric is not enough to cut on fold. If you're managing fabric like this, if you cut the first part like this, when you're cutting the second part, remember do not place this same side on top else you end up having one double hips like two hips facing each other so what you do turn it upside down so then cut the second part so that you not make mistake even if you're not using pattern paper when you cut the first one place it on the other one to cut so that you don't end up having two left hips so guys we're done cutting the skirt part of this um, dress this is the back and then this is the front so now we'll go ahead and cut that upper cow part which will be using that other um, color fabric so we're cutting out the front part of this dress I placed the pattern paper on it and cut on fold and then placed this other one on the same fabric and cut out another one that we'll use to turn it out. You can decide to cut only one and bias the neck with a bias. Then, but this, I have extra fabric, so excess fabric, I mean, so I have to line in the front. I did not line in the skirt. I just wanted this upper part to be neat. So after cutting this part out, the next thing to do is cut out that um, two inches back, pa back pattern. After that, we'll cut out the straps. Make your strap as long as possible because it starts from the neck down to the loops at the back. If it is too short, it can't cover the whole of the loops in your back. So I'm also cutting this back, this back pattern double because I'll have to line in and fold out everything. That loop part also needs to be turned out to make it neat. That's why I'm cutting double. So that will be all basically. After cutting this part out, you cut out the loop, we are done. Just make your loop as long as possible. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done that already. Like this video, share this video, comment and let us know what you want us to do. So now we'll go ahead to the sewing machine and sew. So guys, welcome to the sewing part of this video. We'll start by turning out the straps that we'll be using for this dress. The straps and the loops that we cut earlier we are going to turn them out trim out the excesses and then iron before attaching it to the front part and the back part of this dress so this is me turning out the straps while sewing and turning out these straps you have to be very careful especially when you're dealing with delicate fabrics 
turning it out you might end up tearing it if you're not careful so kindly take note of turning them out carefully to avoid tearing them or starting afresh so this is me turning out the loops and straps we'll be using and then i'll go ahead and trim it out after trimming out the part the excess we don't need i'll then go ahead and turn it out it is this process of turning out that i advise you be careful about i do not have that pin that you can use to turn out so i used my bone this corset the bonings we use for corsets that's what i used to turn it out i already uh, melted the mouth of the bones like the beginning the edges those sharp edges before i start using it to turn it out so that it will not tear so this is the part that you should be careful about So after turning out and ironing, this is what we have. We'll be using these shorter ones for the loops at the back and these longer ones for the strap on the front. So now we'll go ahead and attach the longer ones to the front parts. As you see me doing, by the edge, see that edge of that front we cut close to the armhole. That's where you put it in between the two fabrics on the right side and then you take a stitch straight down all through the upper part of the top then when you sew down to the other end of the other armhole you put the second strap the way you did it the first time and sew it down after doing that you take make a top stitch on top of it and turn it out before we go ahead and do the loops of the back so after turning out this is what we have and on the edge the sides that's where we'll be fixing the back but before that we'll have to fix the loops first so this place is where we're putting the back let's fix the loop first so fixing this loop you take the strap that you just made come down by half an inch on the upper part before you make that fold stitch this is how it's going to be but you have to come down a bit why are we coming down because we need to sew that upper part straight down that's how we're coming down by half an inch so now we'll make the take the loops on top of the back piece one of them because we're turning it with the second piece and sew after doing that take your measuring tape and measure one inch some people like their loops spacious depends on how spacious you want it to be and maintain that space if you're using one inch maintain it if you're using one and a half maintain it all through so you don't have a scattered loops at the end of the day so after making all of the loops together you introduce the second piece and use it to make a stitch and turn it out So this is what we have and this is the second piece we'll be using to turn it out. Remember that notched part is the part we'll be attaching to the front piece while this straight part is the part that has the loops. So this is me making a stitch. After making this stitch straight down, you open it and make a top stitch so you have a very neat work. So this is what we have and now we are, we'll go ahead and sew the upper part to turn it out. Then after this you repeat the same thing on the second piece. I'm so sorry my camera shifted here and I didn't realize it wasn't showing fully but I hope you can manage this. So this is what we have from the first one we did. So we'll press it, iron it and this is the second one we are done with the two parts so now this notched part that we are attaching to the front piece of the dress will first of all make a stitch down before you attach it because we are going to be putting it inside to turn it outside so this is the front piece you put it in between remember we have two pieces of the front the lining and the fabric so you open it out like this Put this back you just did in between, bring the other part to cover it and place it on your sewing machine and sew. 
with this method you have a very neat work there's no point use going to the weaving machine to weave any edge you turn it out and it will be in seam so after turning it out this is what it looks like you you cannot even tell which is back and which is front except you're using two different fabrics so as you can see we've attached one side we'll go ahead and go to the second side and repeat the same thing we did before So guys, we are done attaching the both backs to the front and this is the result. This is what we have. The under of this is what we'll be attaching to the skirt piece. So you make a stitch straight down and introduce your skirt piece. First of all, we'll have to change our thread to brown. Remember, I'm using two different colors for this tutorial. So this is the skirt part we'll be using for this dress and to start with we'll first of all hold down the zipper allowance straight down. We'll come back and lose it later but first of all we'll hold it straight down when you use a loose stitch to stitch for like 9 inches. After 9 inches you now sew it tightly the under because we're coming back to lose that 9 inches upwards. So after doing that, the next thing we'll do now is hold our darts for the back and front before we can attach it together. Remember that the darts we took while we were cutting earlier on the pattern, we took 4 inches from the middle and took 5 inches down for the back and 4 inches from the middle and five in, um, 4 inches down for the front piece. So. This is me taking the darts for both front and back before we attach the front piece of the skirt and the back piece of the skirt together. So now that we are done taking our darts for back and front, we will now go ahead and take the side stitches. And before you do this, make sure you've taken your measurements that you're using, that's called shaping. You use the measurements that you used for the clients or for the dress to shape the both sides and run a straight stitch down as I'm doing. But before you reach the last part, the down of the dress, you stop there because we are going to leave that end to turn it up, to turn it over to have a neat end of the dress. So that's why we are not running this stitch straight down. As you see me doing like this, we'll come back and fold it. So I went ahead and took my waist measurement and ran the stitch on the other side too. So we'll now do the folding of the under part later. But before that, we will now open up the zipper allowance that we stitched earlier so that we can fix the front part of this dress. So this is what we have. The skirt part is ready. Now we lose this zipper allowance that we made earlier. After losing, fold the skirt, 
the front part of the skirt into two as you see me doing like this and make a notch at the middle so you know the middle of the skirt and you also fold the upper part of the shirt the upper part of the dress into two the front part notch the middle then put both middle together making sure that the both the good sides of the fabrics are facing each other and then you make a stitch straight down on both sides while you're making your stitch there's this part that the front part of the clothes will not reach remember the back is open you will now need a bias i did not have a brown bias while i was making this tutorial so i ended up using this one available so i cut out a bias and use it to cover the remaining part of that skirt part where the front did not reach we will end up folding it in later when we are done so you go to the other side do the same thing as you see me doing like this So guys, thank you for watching to this point. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done that. This is what we have already after putting the bias. What is left now is to fix our zipper. So that on that 9 inches that we lost earlier, we will now fix our zip on that part. After fixing the zipper, the next thing to do is to fold in that down part that we did not fold earlier while we were taking stitches on both sides of the skirt. After doing that, basically the dress is ready. The zipper has been fixed, the loops has been made, the upper part has been joined to the skirt part of the dress and that is all. So this is me fixing the zip and I want to let you guys know how much I am full for staying with me till this time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't done that, please remember to subscribe. So here I'm trying to tuck in the zipper and lock the upper part of the zipper. After doing that, I'll just go ahead and fold the under part of the skirt that I haven't finished before. And that will be all. So for this last part of this dress, if you don't want to make it short, you want yours to be long, like you can see the orange of this style I made initially is long. I just made this for the tutorial, so I had to stop at short length. So and I did not use a lining for this, that's why you see me turning the under like this. If you had used a lining, you will now use the lining to fold in the down part of this skirt. You wouldn't need all of this turning. But me, after folding in my down, what I just need to do is iron it to make it look very neat. And then our dress is ready, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is the orange I made before I'm posted and somebody requested for tutorial. And this is the new one I just made. It's not my size, so I decided to use a dummy. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. Bye.